Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between Plechner's syndrome, Cushing syndrome, and Addison's disease? Yeah, Cushing syndrome uh, was found by an Edward Cushing uh, probably 1936, 1937. He was an MD pathologist. And what he found was that uh, five or six of the people he dealt with had tumors of the pituitary. And the significance of that is the pituitary tumors produce their hormone called ACTH, which stimulates the middle layer adrenal to produce cortisol. And so when there's an excess production of cortisol, uh, all kinds of unhappy problems happen. This is Now, this is Cushing syndrome. Unfortunately, a bunch of other uh, cortisol-involved uh, deregulation is included with Cushing syndrome, but what Cushing syndrome is, is it's actually active cortisol, period. Now, Addison syndrome uh, comes from the first layer of adrenal cortex, and it's a hormone produced called aldosterone, and it regulates your sodium-potassium pump, uh, and it's a, a totally different syndrome from what I have found. What, what my syndrome is, basically, it identifies even high-level cortisol, but it proves whether it's active or inactive. So Plechner syndrome deals with an inactive, defective, normal, elevated cortisol that is leading to elevated uh, estrogen, which in turn will deregulate the immune system, and the immune cells then lose recognition of self-tissue, and this is where autoimmunity and cancer comes from. Uh, and this is the, the importance of this. It also, the estrogen binds the receptor sites for thyroid. So your thyroid hormone is going to be perfectly normal, but if you don't measure total estrogen, what you find is that uh, you can't use the hormone. The fact that it's there, and they do uh, empirical studies on free hormone, free thyroid, T3 active, triothyronine or thyroxin T4, the fact that it's there is no indication your body can use it. So this kind of a, a comparative test is really, really, really important with the regulation of the immune system. And the nice part about this is once you do the syndrome, you can re-regulate the immune system and your values are all there. And so you can, each patient is an individual and each patient will just take so much hormone to normalize the immune system. And once that's done, your allergies are done with, your autoimmunity is over with, your cancer is over with. Unfortunately, in uh, canines, if you will, with dogs now, and in uh, male humans, only the estradiol is measured, not total estrogen. In women, the three ovarian estrogens are measured, uh, but no total estrogen. And this is one of the problems when the total estrogen is high, and you say postmenopausal, and your estradiols are low, and you're put on an estrogen patch, it's going to cause nothing but trouble. So anyway, the, the importance of this is what it's really coming down to is you've got to measure total estrogen, even if you don't do Plechner syndrome. And if it is there, then something needs to be done. Can you tell us the importance of Plechner syndrome for you and your pet concerning today's medicine? Well, with today's medicine, it's so important to look at this syndrome because it is the basis of allergies, autoimmunity, and cancer in people and animals. And I've been involved with probably over 200,000 cases worldwide, including dogs, cats, horses, humans, and bighorn sheep. Uh, and between the laboratories, the human labs that have done my testing, Plechner syndrome, my endocrine immune imbalance, if you will, uh, we've done over 100,000 tests. So it really, really is what it is. It's not something you know crazy that's just coming out of the woodwork. It is something that's so necessary. Uh, and I've been involved with cases of uh, multiple sclerosis, and they all had high estrogen. I did AIDS patients. They all had high estrogen. These are all people. Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, high estrogen. You know, I worry, uh, as a medical profession worries about uh, estrogen causing inflammation. Well, if you're not measuring total estrogen, you're really missing something. I mean, when you look at some of the mental disorders and some of the problems, when you look at Alzheimer's, why not measure total estrogen? I think all I'm saying to the public, the world, if you will, is let's let's measure total estrogen. There's only one veterinary lab at this point that can do total estrogens, uh, but all your human labs are able to do it. It's just that it needs to be asked for because it's not understood. They know the damage estrogen can do, and yet they're not measuring total estrogen. And this is kind of the thing 
that I'm trying to push so hard with Plechner syndrome, not even with my name involved in it, I could care less. But if, if you, your dog, your cat, your horse, anybody has an allergy, autoimmune disease, or cancer, why not test estrogen? You don't have to act upon it. You know, it's not like cutting off a hand. It's just a simple blood test. And why do you think there's hesitation with doctors and veterinarians to test for total estrogen? Well, I think they don't realize, for some reason, there's no realization that a tremendous amount of estrogen comes out of the inner layer of adrenal cortex, what they call the zona reticularis. It's interesting because they, uh, the medical profession realizes that uh, for females, androgen comes out of a male hormone out of the inner layer of adrenal cortex. Well, so does total estrogen. But see, nobody's measuring it. And the other end of the stick, too, is when you're doing something like this, there are certain times that that total estrogen should be measured. In your animals that have their ovaries removed and male dogs with no ovaries uh, and men, uh, your estrogen can be done at any time. Uh, if it's a postmenopausal woman, that estrogen can be done at any time. If you're still menstruating, then to do the total estrogen to realize the difference between ovarian and uh, adrenal estrogen, along about the seventh day of the ovarian cycle, when normally the ovaries are at least active for producing estrogen, you do the test at that time, and then again you do it 21st, 23rd day when the ovaries are the most active. And what is the difference? The difference is adrenal estrogen. So a lot of this has been hidden because I think a lot of the testing hasn't uh, looked at the timing of estrogen, where it's coming from, but there is just a lack of realization that uh, they, don't, they don't know that there's a huge amount of estrogen coming out of the adrenal cortex. And this is why uh, we're having problems today, even in the environment with xenoestrogens, estrogen mimickers, Roundup, all these things, your plastics you worry about, your bisulfenol A, in your baby bottles going from plastic to, uh, to glass, uh, looking at the insides of all your canned foods, whether for you or your dog, it has a plastic spade in it, bisulfenol A, and this brings along the estrogen. So along with, even if you had normal estrogen, there's a problem with exposing yourself to these environmental uh, issues. But I actually have an article that just came out uh, recently on my website looking at environmental changes due to estrogen. And it, it is, it's frightening to see some of the stuff that's going on. Like in the Everglades, one day, that one time uh, was spraying Roundup to killing a lot of the vegetation and providing for the alligators a type of a external estrogen, if you will. Uh, all the females, all the, est all the alligators became females at one time. And they've shown how estrogen can interrupt the zygote and how, in fact, it can uh, cause hermaphrodism, it can cause all kinds of things. So looking at estrogen is really important, but why not start with the patient first and then look to the environment second?